Well, hey everyone, it's that time again. Time for some more bad signs. So, this week I was slumming a bit, and yeah, I had a silly program turned on in the background. Uh, a program you've probably heard of called Ancient Aliens. So, um, don't worry, I'm not, I'm not losing my mind. I'm just one of those people who needs a little background noise when they're doing tedious, monotonous tasks, like grading. And in this case, I had this thing going in my headphones. And usually it's pure noise, but this time, some little bit of the noise percol percolated up through my auditory nuclei and up into my cortex, so I, I actually paid attention for a moment. I heard this introduction. Almaty, Kazakhstan, May 2013. Mathematician Vladimir Shermak and astrobiologist Maxim Makukov publish a study they have conducted on the human genome. Their research has led them to the shocking conclusion that there is a hidden code within our DNA, one that contains precise mathematical patterns and an unknown symbolic language. Oh boy, I remember that paper. Um, Ancient Aliens got it wrong, though. Uh, Sherbak and Makakov, the authors of that paper out of Kazakhstan, didn't look at the genome at all. No, there was nothing about the genome anywhere in that paper. Uh, apparently, the writers for this story didn't bother to actually look up their sources. Anyway, they only looked at the genetic code, which is entirely different. Now, it's often confused by lay people. I've run into this with students, too, where they think the genetic code and the genome are the same. No, they're not. They're different. They're completely different. But that's the first clue that uh, none of these people had read the paper, or if they did, they didn't understand it. They looked into the human genome and they found what appeared to be an extraterrestrial stamp on our genetic code. And it operated very much like a mathematical type of code. Who? I, I have no idea who this person is, what kind of authority he has. So I had to look him up and what he is, is a talk radio host. Yes, I'm sorry, he's, he's a coach. He's got, yeah, he's, he's a conservative lackwit. That's all you need to know. Um, he's lately been deplatformed, apparently, from one site uh, because he keeps pushing nonsense about the coronavirus and how we shouldn't wear masks and, not, yeah, that kind of, that kind of guy. Yeah, don't, don't use him as an authority for anything. Anyway, I don't think he understands the difference between the genome and the genetic code either. Hmm. The real thrill in this, this little production, though, is the appearance of a famous clown. You've all seen him before. Yeah, it's Giorgio Tsoukalos. So take it away, Giorgio. Let's see how you can spin this paper. The odds of this sequence occurring nine times in the randomness of our genetic code is one in 10 trillion. Finally, someone has come across the one piece of evidence that I've always said we need in order to prove the ancient astronaut theory. I always said it'll never be a crashed spaceship or a ray gun that will dig somewhere in the sand but it will be found within our own DNA. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, how badly can he get it wrong? He apparently never read the paper either. So there are a few problems with his interpretations. So no, the genetic code is not assumed to be random. Just looking at it, it's kind of obvious to biologists and biochemists and everybody who studies it that, yeah, there's patterns there, really interesting patterns. He also gets the probability wrong. The odds of the specific congenitic code we use occurring by pure chance is not one in 10 trillion. That uh, the authors of the paper point out that it's 
that 384 bits describes the code, which means we're talking about something like 3 times 10 to the 115th power. So really low odds there. Again, though, that's irrelevant because we know it's not pure chance. He also makes the assumption that we'll find evidence of ancient aliens meddling in our DNA from this. So that's also not true because exactly the opposite has occurred. What we found evidence of is common descent and of our relationship to all the other animals on Earth, all the other organisms on Earth. So he might be surprised to learn that Sherbach and uh, Makakov say the same thing. Even if their interpretation is entirely correct, it isn't. But we'll just play this game. Let's assume they're correct, that they found evidence of alien intervention in the design of our genetic code. Uh, their observation reinforces the ideas of common descent and reinforces the idea that all life on Earth is related. Exactly the opposite of what ancient aliens wants to pretend. So, before we get into that, though, first of all, let's clarify a significant distinction. The genome versus the genetic code. Like I said, they're different things. So, the genome is the sequence of nucleotides in the entire nuclear chromosome set. In us humans, that's about 3 billion nucleotides. You know, all those A's and C's and T's and G's lined up in the DNA. We sequenced the human genome in the late 1990s, and now we can do fun stuff like comparing the arrangements of nucleotides in our cytochrome C gene with the cytochrome C genes of chimps, flies, frogs, and bacteria, etc. It's obvious from the context that that's what the goofballs on ancient aliens are thinking of. The genetic code is altogether different and was worked out 40 years earlier. The code is how a trio of nucleotides in DNA, called a codon, is translated into an amino acid in a protein. This is the genetic code. So, what the genetic code says is that the RNA has read three nucleotides at a time, and that each triplet specifies an amino acid. So, UUU is translated to phenylalanine, you can see that at the top left, while GGG at the bottom right means glycine. That's it. It's a way to encode 20 possible amino acids and some punctuation with four possible nucleotides. Figuring this out was a triumph, and it allowed us to determine the sequence of a protein from the sequence of nucleotides in a gene. A subsequent discovery is that all organisms on Earth use this same genetic code. Okay, there are a few special case ex exceptions. So, UUU in a human codes for phenylalanine, and UUU also codes for phenylalanine in an avocado or a mushroom or yeast. The translation process is universal. That makes sense, because a mutation that changed the code would change how every single gene in the organism would be interpreted and translated. The code is basically locked in from the very first organism that evolved, and this is further evidence for common descent. Sherbach and Makakov do not dispute that, and in fact embrace it. Every living thing on Earth uses the same code, no problem. The question is, why this specific code? Why does UUU code for phenylalanine and not lysine, for instance? Why is there a pattern where, for instance, every codon that starts with CC encodes proline, with the third nucleotide making no difference? Why are there exceptions? like with a UU pair coding for two different amino acids, phenylalanine and leucine, depending on what the third nucleotide is. Those are actually good and interesting questions, and biochemists have been trying to answer them for a while. I'd suggest that it's evidence that the original code consisted of two nucleotide pairs, which was only sufficient for 16 possible combinations, 
and was inadequate to specify 20 amino acids. The third nucleotide in the codon was only later incorporated to add additional specificity. There were also interesting ideas floating around that the associated RNA dinucleotides were actually catalytic elements specific to the synthesis of their associated amino acid. But that's not what Sherbach and uh, Makakov are suggesting. Instead, they argue that the genetic code was specifically set up by intelligent designers to have particular math mathematical properties, peculiar properties that are not an essential part of any code, but were placed there to get the attention of any intelligent species that evolved to puzzle out the code. They call it the wow signal. It doesn't carry any useful information other than one message. It's a signature of artificiality, nothing more. It was designed to have a particular mathematical meaning that says, basically, it's just too pretty and elegant to have been a product of chance. I disagree, obviously, and I don't think they made an adequate case, and that any code could get the kind of post hoc rationalization they give it. It reads like a very silly and rather pompous paper that uses numerology and odd twisty diagrams like this one to make a strained claim with only hand-wavy evidence. But here's the problem with the way ancient aliens tries to use it. It's a universal code. All life on Earth uses the same code. You can't use it to claim that there is a special destiny written into our human genome because clams and spiders all carry the same code we do. The code is entirely neutral on the fate of subsequently evolved proteins. What Sherbach and Makakov instead try to claim is that this is evidence of a singular panspermia event early in the history of life on Earth. That we were seeded with organisms with this unique code because the code is resistant to evolutionary change and would be a marker to any species that later evolved to let them know who their maker was. I don't think it's sufficiently special to do that, however, and would favor the idea that our code is a product of chance and biochemical necessity. However, I did think of one science fictional premise for it. If the code is an arbitrary and an aesthetic and mathematical choice by a designer, and if it's locked in by hard selection as soon as an organism adopts it, then it could be a useful brand marker to lay claim to all the descendants of the original design stock. The Zordaxians could have designed their specific code to distinguish us from any world seeded by their competitors, the Nihilanths or whatever. They were planning very far ahead, so they'd know if they landed on Earth four billion years after the seeding, if they saw the UU coding for phenylalanine, rather than, say, arginine, that meant we were theirs and not their competitors. Cute idea, anyway. Anyway, the, the real point here is that the numerology of Sherbach and Makakov does not make the point they think it does. Uh, and it also doesn't make the point that the writers of ancient aliens and their talking heads like Whitehead and Sucolos think it does. It means they're friggin' idiots, okay. But you already knew that, right? So I can stop right there. That's, that's my easy message today. Okay, that's it for this week. Now, normally I would leave you with some lovely drone footage of my part of the world, but what it turns out my part of the world has been afflicted with cold and fierce winds all week. So I chose to stay home and inside where it's nice and warm. So instead, you just have to enjoy the names of my patrons floating by. You should enjoy that, right? Because these really are wonderful people, all of them, every single one of them. Um, I should remind you also that I have a Patreon account at http colon slash slash patreon.com slash pzmyers, my name, spell it right. Um, and I would greatly appreciate it if you'd drop a tip in there. I'm cheap. I don't ask for much, but it does help counter the 
legal expenses we've been experiencing in the recent years. <sighs> Alas. Anyway, uh, yeah, join my Patreon. Or alternatively, hey, just like and subscribe. You know that stuff that all the other YouTubers say you're supposed to do if you like our content? Go ahead. Yeah, that costs you nothing. Just go ahead and do it. Um, also, feel free to leave tips in the comments for subsequent episodes in this series. Uh, it's kind of weird. There is no shortage of crap on YouTube. Bad science that I feel compelled to resist. So really what I need is assistance in narrowing it down to topics that would maybe interest you or other people. Uh, it's just kind of overwhelming out there. Uh, I'm still planning to start another YouTube series. It'll have to wait till after the semester though ends, though. I've been overwhelmed with, hey, you know my day job? I'm teaching cell biology. I'm teaching a writing course in science. I'm just getting all this... It's the last two weeks of the semester, so I'm kind of buried in grading. But after that's over, I've got a long period of time in which I can think about, ooh, here's some cool stuff I'd like to talk about. So I'm planning to start this series right after the end of the semester. Um, I even have a name picked out. It's going to be called Evo Devo Diary. So you can sort of guess the content from that. I'm going to be talking about the cool science of evolution and development. Uh, not going to waste time with creationist BS. We'll just go straight to the real science. And I'll be starting that up probably the week after Thanksgiving, or maybe the week after that. Depends. On, I, I've got it scripted in my head at least, but you know, you got to be, you got to be formal with this stuff. Put together some quality content. Okay, that's after Thanksgiving. Okay, so I'll let you go there. Thanks for listening. I will be back next week with something. Yeah, again, tell me what you want to hear about. I'm happy to talk about just about anything. There's no shortage of material out there. See you next week. <laughs>